1 Kings chapter 6. In the 480th year after the Israelites had come out of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziv, the second month, he began to build the temple of the Lord. The temple that King Solomon built for the Lord was 60 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 30 high. The portico at the front of the main hall of the temple extended the width of the temple, that is 20 cubits, and projected 10 cubits from the front of the temple. He made narrow, clustery windows in the temple. Against the walls of the main hall and inner sanctuary, he built a structure around the building in which there were side rooms. The lowest floor was five cubits wide, the middle floor six cubits, and the third floor seven. He made offset ledges around the outside of the temple so that nothing would be inserted into the temple walls. In building the temple, only blocks dressed at the quarry were used and no hammer, chisel, or any other iron tool was heard at the temple site while it was being built. The entrance to the lowest floor was on the south side of the temple. A stairway led up to the middle level and from there to the third. So he built the temple and completed it, roofing it with beams and cedar planks. And he built the side rooms all along the temple. The height of each was five cubits, and they were attached to the temple by beam of cedar, beams of cedar. The word of the Lord came to Solomon. As for this temple you're building, if you follow my decrees, carry out my regulations, and keep all my commands and obey them, I will fulfill through you the promise I gave to David, your father. And I will live among the Israelites and will not abandon my people Israel. So Solomon built the temple and completed it. He lined its interior walls with cedar boards, paneling them from the floor of the temple to the ceiling, and covered the floor of the temple with planks of pine. He partitioned off 20 cubits at the rear of the temple with cedar boards from floor to ceiling to form within the temple an inner sanctuary, the, the most holy place. The main hall in front of this room was 40 cubits long. The inside of the temple was cedar, carved with gourds and open flowers. Everything was cedar. No stone was to be seen. He prepared the inner sanctuary within the temple to set the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord there. The inner sanctuary was 20 cubits long, 20 wide, and 20 high. He overlaid the inside with pure gold, and he also overlaid the altar with cedar. Solomon covered the inside of the temple with pure gold, and he extended gold chains across the front of the inner sanctuary, which was overlaid with gold. So he overlaid the whole interior with gold. He also overlaid with gold the altar that belonged to the inner sanctuary. In the inner sanctuary, he made a pair of cherubim of olive wood, each 10 cubits high. One wing of the first cherub was five cubits long and the other wing five cubits, 10 cubits from wingtip to wingtip. The second cherub also measured 10 cubits for the two cherubim were identical in size and shape. The height of each cherub was 10 cubits. He placed the cherubim inside the innermost room of the temple with their wings spread out. The wing of one cherub touched the wall while the wing of the other touched the other wall and their wings touched each other in the middle of the room. He overlaid the cherubim with gold. On the walls all around the temple, in both the inner and outer rooms, he carved cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. He also covered the floors of both the inner and outer rooms of the temple with gold. For the entrance of the inner sanctuary, he made doors of olive wood with five-sided jams. And on the two olive wood doors, he carved cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers and overlaid the cherubim and palm trees with beaten gold. In the same way, he made four-sided jams of olive wood for the entrance to the main hall. He also made two pine doors, each having two leaves that turned in sockets. He carved cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers on them and overlaid them with gold hammered evenly over the carvings. And he built the inner courtyard of three courses of dressed stone and one course of trimmed cedar beams. The foundation of the temple of the Lord was laid in the fourth year, in the month of Ziv. In the eleventh year, in the month of Bull, the eighth month, the temple was finished in all its details according to its specifications. 
He had spent seven years building it. <clears throat> chapter, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter seven. <clears throat> it took Solomon 13 years, however, to complete the construction of his palace. He built the palace of the forest of Lebanon, a hundred cubits long, 50 wide and 30 high, with four rows of cedar columns supporting trimmed cedar beams. It was roofed with cedar above the beams that rested on the columns, 45 beams, 15 to a row. Its windows were placed high in sets of three facing each other. All the doorways had rectangular frames. They were in, front, in the front part in sets of three facing each other. He made a colonnade 50 cubits long and 30 wide. In front of it was a portico and in front of that were pillars and an overhanging roof. He built the throne hall, the hall of justice, where he was to judge, and he covered it with cedar from floor to ceiling. And the palace in which he was to live, set farther back, was similar in design. Solomon also made a palace like this hall for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had married. All these instruct I'm sorry, all these structures from the outside to the great courtyard and from the foundation to the eaves were made of blocks of high-grade stone cut to size and trimmed with a saw on their inner and outer faces. The foundations were laid with large stones of good quality, some measuring 10 cubits and some eight. Above were high-grade stones cut to size and cedar beams. The great courtyard was surrounded by a wall of three courses of dressed stone and one course of trimmed cedar beams as was the inner courtyard of the temple of the Lord with its portico. King Solomon sent to Tyre and brought Hiram, whose mother was a widow from the tribe of Naphtali and whose father was a man of Tyre with a craftsman in bronze and a craftsman in bronze. Hiram was highly skilled and experienced in all kinds of bronze work. He came, came to King Solomon and did all the work assigned to him. He cast two bronze pillars, each 18 cubits high and 12 cubits around, by line. He also made two capitals of cast bronze to set on the tops of the pillars. Each capital was five cubits high. A network of interwoven chains festooned the capitals on top of the pillars, seven for each capital. He made pomegranates in two rows encircling each network to decorate the capitals on top of the pillars. He did the same for each capital. The capitals on top of the pillars in the portico were in the shape of lilies, four cubits high. On the capitals of both pillars, above the bowl-shaped part next to the network, were the 200 pomegranates in rows all around. He erected the pillars at the portico in the temple. The pillar to the south he named Jachin, and the one to the north, Boaz. The capitals on top were in the shape of lilies, and so the work of the pillars was completed. He made the sea of cast metal circular in shape, measuring 10 cubits from rim to rim and five cubits high. It took a line of 30 cubits to measure around it. Below the rim, gourds encircled it, 10 to a cubit. The gourds were cast in two rows in one piece with the sea. The sea stood on 12 bulls, three facing north, three facing west, three facing south, and three facing east. The sea rested on top of them, and their hindquarters were toward the center. <clears throat> it was a handbreadth in thickness, and its rim was like the rim of a cup, like a lily blossom. It held 2,000 baths. He also made 10 movable stands of bronze, each of four cubits long, four wide, and three high. This is how the stands were made. They had side panels attached to uprights. On the panels between the uprights were lions, bulls, and cherubim, and on the uprights as well. Above and below the lions and bulls were wreaths of hammered work. Each stand had four bronze wheels with bronze axles, and each had a basin resting on four supports cast with wreaths on each side. On the inside of the stand, there was an opening that had a circular frame one cubit deep. This opening was round and with a base work in measured with and with its base work it measured a cubit and a half the panels of the stands were square not round the four wheels were under each panel 
were, un I'm sorry, the four wheels were under the panels and the axles of the wheels were attached to the stand. The diameter of each wheel was a cubit and a half. The wheels were made like chariot wheels. The axles, rims, spokes, and hubs were all of cast metal. Each stand had four handles, one on each corner projecting from the stand. At the top of the stand, there was a circular band half a cubit deep. The supports and panels were attached to the top of the stand. He engraved cherubim, lions, and palm trees on the surfaces of the supports and on the panels in every available space with wreaths all around. This is the way he made the 10 stands. They were all cast in the same molds and were identical in shape and size. He then made 10 bronze basins, each holding 40 baths and measuring four cubits across one basin to go on each of the 10 stands. He placed five of the stands on the south side of the temple and five on the north. He placed the sea on the south side at the southeast corner of the temple. He also made the basins and shovels and sprinkling bowls. So Huram finished all the work he had undertaken for King Solomon in the temple of the Lord. The two pillars, the two bowl-shaped capitals on top of the pillars, the two sets of network decorating the two bowl-shaped capitals on top of the pillars, the 400 pomegranates for the two sets of network, two rows of pomegranates for each network decorating the bowl-shaped capitals on top of the pillars, the 10 stands with their 10 basins, the sea and the 12 bowls under it, the pots, shovels, and sprinkling bowls. All these objects that Huram made for King Solomon for the temple of the Lord were of burnished bronze. The king had them cast in clay molds in the plain of the Jordan between Succoth and Zarephan. Solomon left all these things unweighed because there were so many. The weight of the bronze was not determined. Solomon also made all the furnishings that were in the Lord's temple, the golden altar, the golden table on which the bread of the on which was the bread of the presence, the lampstands of pure gold, five on the right and five on the left in front of the inner sanctuary, the gold floral work and lamps and tongs, the pure gold basins, wick trimmers, sprinkling bowls, dishes and censers, and the gold sockets for the doors of the innermost room, the most holy place, and also for the doors of the main hall of the temple. When all the work King Solomon had done for the temple of the Lord was finished, he brought in the things his father David had dedicated, the silver and gold and the furnishings, and he placed them in the treasuries of the Lord's temple.